Hey everybody, this is going to be the video tutorial that's going to show you how to make the jagged water bottle holder. And to make this water bottle holder, I use, this is a yarn that I used, it's Elise Cotton Club, Gold Cotton. And for the amount of yarn I used out of this skein, this skein was already opened and used a small amount for something else and I was still able to make a full water bottle holder and I still have all this left over. So you should have enough to make a couple. I also used a four millimeter hook. Uh, I recommend using four millimeter hook or a 4.5 or 3.5 millimeter hook. Just uh, stay on the smaller side because it makes the texture look so much better and also uh, it won't be as big of a stretch. This kind of yarn that I have says that it's it's cotton and acrylic. It's 55% cotton, 45% acrylic, which is perfect because it has the stretchiness of the acrylic. And also acrylic does great for when it gets wet and cotton as well. So this is a great mix for anything you want to use for washcloths or something like the water bottle that's going to, you know, that's going to uh, condensate. So uh, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and use some thicker yarn so you can see the stitches a lot better. And I'm going to be using a 5 millimeter hook or size H hook, but this is just going to be for tutorial purposes only. Okay, to start, you want to chain three. And then you'll slip stitch in this beginning chain to form a ring. For row one, you want to chain three and then in the ring itself here you want to put 11 and I work over the tail by the way because it, it uh, you can create kind of a pulley system at the end to tighten your hole if you need to but you want to put 11 double crochets worked into this center ring so go ahead and do your 11 and we'll be right back. Okay, once you have your 11 double crochets done, counting the chain two at the beginning, you should have a total of 12 stitches. Make sure that you count them. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. I have 12. So I want to slip stitch in the top of my beginning chain three. And that will end row, uh, sorry, round one. So for round two, you want to chain two. And in that same stitch here where you slip stitched and end your row, you want to put a double crochet into that same stitch. And now you want to put two double crochets worked in each stitch around. You're going to be doubling your stitches this round. So go ahead and put two double crochets in each stitch all the way around and I will see you when you get to the end. Okay, at the end of round two, you should have 24 stitches. Be sure that you count them. And when you do, you want to slip stitch in the top of the beginning chain two. For round three, you want to chain two, which is going to count as your very first double crochet here. Move to your next stitch and put two double crochets into that next stitch. And then in the next following stitch, you want to put one double crochet. And that'll be your repeat for the row. So the next stitch you'll put two double crochets. And then the next stitch after that you'll only put one. You'll continue that pattern of putting two double crochets, then one double crochet, following each stitch all the way around. And I'll see you when you get to the end. Okay, I'm coming up to the end of my round. And you should end with two double crochets worked in that very last stitch. If not, then you know that you probably went wrong somewhere around here. You want a total of 36 stitches, so make sure you count. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36. So when you have your 36 stitches at the end of round three, you want to slip stitch in the top of the beginning chain two to end your round. For round four, you want to chain two and you're going to double crochet in the next stitch. See, this is where we slip stitch, begin a row around, and this is our very first, our next stitch, I should say. So the next stitch, you'll put one. And then you'll want to put one 
in all the stitches around. So last round you had 36 double crochets, so you will have 36 double crochets at the end of round four as well. So go ahead and put one double crochet in all your 36 stitches, and I'll see you in a moment. So the end of round four, you wanna go ahead and give yourself an extra stitch. So these are my last two stitches. This is 35 and 36, because we did 36 last round, and we put one stitch in each stitch around. So this will be 35. Then the very last stitch will be 36. And just to make sure we're, we have enough uh, stitches to do our jagged stitch for the next round, you wanna go ahead and put another double crochet in that very last stitch of the round on the end of round four, which will give you 37 stitches. Once you have that, those 37 stitches, slip stitch, in the beginning stitch, and that will end round four. For round five, we're gonna be doing our very first round of jagged stitches. Jagged stitch takes two stitches to complete. So go ahead and chain two, and we're gonna be using these first two double crochets here. You wanna yarn over and do like you're making a front post double crochet. You'll grab that very first post up, You'll yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through only two of the loops. You'll leave that last loop on your hook. And without yarning over, you just want to insert your hook in that very next stitch, pull up a loop. And now you'll work these last three double crochets, just like you would, I mean, last three loops, like a regular double crochet. So you'll yarn over, pull through two, then yarn over, pull through two, and then very important, you wanna chain one. So you'll move over to the next two stitches. Remember these two are uh, part of the jagged stitch now. So you'll move in to the next two stitches here and you'll yarn over, pick up the post, the very first stitch. Pull up a loop, these first three sets of loops, you'll yarn over, only pull through two. And then without yarning over, you'll just insert your hook into the next stitch, pull up a loop, and then you'll work these three just like you would a regular double crochet and then chain one then to make sure uh, just to give you a little tip as you can see you'll be using every other double crochet this row and it'll be uh, I mean the post of every other double crochet this row so every other one should be pushed forward a little bit so you know when you come up to one that's pushed forward a little bit and then has a, a regular double crochet, you know that that's part, that's the whole thing there is a jagged stitch. So you know you wanna grab every other post. So grab up the post of the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, insert your hook into the very next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and chain one. Then yarn over, go into the next stitch, the post of the next stitch, pull it up, yarn over, pull through two, and then insert your hook right into the very next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and chain one. Do not forget that chain one, very, very important. So again, you'll yarn over, pick up the post of the next stitch, only pull through two, insert your hook in the next stitch without yarning over first, Pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and chain one. And you will continue to do this for the full round. And you should end perfectly where your very last two stitches of your round here will be a jagged stitch. And then you can slip stitch in the top of the beginning chain two. Okay, I just finished my last jagged stitch of the round and I'm up here to my beginning chain two. We have to pull it to see it, but this is the chain two. Find the top and slip stitch to end round five. So for round six, you wanna chain two, and now we're going to be using the back loop only, so just this back loop not the leaving this front loop 
right here alone. So you have two loops, I mean two on every single one looks like a little heart. So instead of using this front loop, you'll only be using this back loop to do the first part of the stitch. You'll want to do a double crochet in that back loop only. And then the very next one, you'll be using the big old chain one space here. And you want to continue to do this for the round. So you got back loop only, and then in the chain one space. Double crochet in that back loop only, and then the chain one space. And you'll continue to do this for all of round six, and I will see you at the end to show you how to begin round seven. So I ended with putting a double crochet in my chain one space, brings me back up to my beginning chain two and I'm going to slip stitch in that beginning chain two to end round six. Now uh, I believe the repeat is now, yep, five and six. So you want to back up and we're going to be repeating round five which is our jagged stitch row. So you'll be alternating having a double crochet row and then you'll be using the, that double crochet to make your jagged stitch. So it basically takes two stitches and two rows to, to make uh, the jagged stitch. So you want to do a chain of two to begin, and then you'll be grabbing up the post of that very first double crochet to start your first part of the jagged stitch. So you'll pull through two, and then insert your hook into the next stitch. Then you'll pull through two, pull through two, chain one. And you'll be continuing that, sorry if it got all blurry here. You'll be continuing that for the row again, going to your next post. You'll do your second part of the jagged stitch in the next stitch. Again, as you can see, this stitch is being used. So you'll go into your next stitch, grab up the post, and it'll be like a double crochet, but you only work through the first two, leaving the last on the hook. Insert your hook in the next stitch, pull up a loop, and then just finish your double crochet and chain one. And the, the trick to make sure that you're, you're working the first part of your jagged uh, crochet stitch is you can see that there's, a f uh, hopefully you can see this, see how there's a, a stitch that's back a little bit and then there, there's the full one because this one was worked in the back loop only and this one was worked in the chain one space. So when you're beginning your first part of your jagged stitch you know you'll be starting the first part of it on one that was worked in a back loop only. So it'll be back just slightly. And then the next part will be worked on the double crochet that was worked in the chain one space and you can fully see it forward and you'll go into the stitch of that one, pull up a loop. Then you'll finish your jagged stitch. Also, you can see how they align. See, from one jagged stitch row to the next, you'll, the front part of it should line up with the front part that you pull up uh, your post. So they should line up. So continue that all the way around. So go ahead and finish this round and I'll see you in a moment. Okay, I come to the end of my round, did my last jagged stitch, chain one, find the top, the beginning, chain two, and slip stitch. So you have an option here. Um, when you slip stitch, you're essentially creating a chain one. So you don't have to chain one after the very last jagged crochet stitch. You could just do the jagged crochet stitch instead of chaining one and moving on. You could just slip stitch in the ending only for this uh, last stitch. Um, but I always went ahead and did my chain one and then slip stitched. But it's up to you. If you find you're having too big of a hole here and you don't like it, then um, no need to chain one after the very last jagged crochet stitch. Just uh, end your round with slip stitching on the beginning chain two and then that'll create your chain one at the end. So 
go ahead and chain two because that's how you always begin your round and we're going to do a repeat of row six so again after a jagged stitch row the very first double crochet of your row will be worked in the back loop only and then your double crochet will be worked in the chain one space then again double crochet in the back loop only and then double crochet in that chain one space and you will continue to do this for the entirety of your round and then you will repeat a jagged stitch row I'm sorry round so continue to repeat this until I continue to repeat it until I had 11 total completed rows like I told you the jagged stitch takes up two rows essentially the uh, the jagged stitch row itself and then of course the double crochet row that you do before it so each one of these jagged rows uh, completed like this is two rows so that's one two three four that kind of a thing so this is how I counted so each one of these is you know a row of jagged stitches and I had 11 of them one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven rounds of jagged stitches completed if you want the actual number of the rows that I did I did a total including the beginning rounds I did a total of 25 rounds so that's counting each one of these as two rounds but it's easier obviously when it's all said and done because you just count completed rows and if you have 11 then you know that you're good to go and that's just what uh, I chose for mine because I wanted to be able to, to hold uh, big bottles and it not be uh, over because it's going to stretch over time so whatever if it fits it perfectly now it's probably too big depending on the size of the bottle that you're making yours for uh, because over time it stretches not to mean not to uh, mention that the weight of the bottle will also make it stretch but you can't go by that at the beginning because in time it will stretch more out naturally so I always make that mistake so I'm just throwing that out to you to, to warn you so go ahead and do that and uh, I'll go ahead and finish and then I'll finish my jagged row and then I'll show you how to begin your strap just on this little piece here I'm coming to the end of my round here on row uh, the repeat of the, the row six and I forgot I wanted to point out on the very last one there's the the ending chain one and then the slip stitch you make sure that you put a double crochet there then slip stitch you're beginning chain two to end the round then I'm just going to start my last jagged stitch round which is the repeat of row five so I'll just complete this and then I will show you how to do the strap and the strap I did using the jagged stitch as well but I don't know how good it looks so you could just do a simple six double crochets if you want so let me just finish this uh, round and I'll show you what I'm talking about okay just finished my ja my last jagged stitch of the round and I'm gonna slip stitch in the ending chain two to end my round now uh, when you're ready to begin the straps here I wanted to to go ahead and do the straps with a little texture as well put a little jagged stitch on there I don't know if you can notice I mean obviously if it was just plain double crochets it would look a lot different it does add texture so I'm going to show you how to do that so to begin you're going to just start right from where you are so you'll chain two and then now you'll be going in for this for these first six it doesn't matter you can just go under both loops and then in the chain one space and then under both loops and then chain one space one two three four counting the chain space is five so I'm just going to go into the very next somehow I got 
should be even, but it's not. Try this again. Under both loops, chain one space. Under both loop, ooh, I know what I did. I forgot to chain one here, my bad. So, just gonna go under both loops and then, I mean, uh, uh, in that space. So, okay, so I have a total of six, including the chain two at the beginning. So once you have your six, you wanna chain two and turn. And now you wanna put a double crochet starting in the very next stitch. So you'll have five double crochets in a row. Just, and this will just help you be able to stay on the correct side later on. Make sure you get that double crochet in the top of the chain two. So with the beginning chain two here, you should still have six stitches. So now we're ready to chain two and we're gonna start doing our jagged crochet stitch. So using the post of the very next stitch, we'll grab that up, do the first part of your jagged stitch, go into the very next stitch, pull up a loop, and complete your jagged stitch. Don't forget to chain one. Then you go into the, grab up the post of the next, to do your your jagged stitch using the next two stitches. Don't forget to chain one and then you'll double crochet in that ending chain two. So you should be getting two jagged stitches per one. And the reason why I wanted to do it at the end of the row here because it makes it to where when you're picking up the bottle you'll have one part of the handle here, one part of the handle here, and then you won't have a seam running down here or here because it's going to be down the strap. So it just makes more sense to just do it right at the end of the row and start your strap. So after a jagged stitch row you'll chain two and then again um, on working back and forth in rows like this, I'm going to get a little closer here, plus it's overcast today so I'm losing some of my light here. So you'll be doing on the front loop only if you want though it doesn't look like it's such a big texture difference on the strap but usually when you work jagged stitch in rows you'll be using the very uh, the front loop only I mean the back the front yeah the front loop only to do the first part uh, of your double crochet and then you'll go under both loops for the next so, because it's easier just to grab up that front post. So, however you want to do it, just make sure you have five double crochets worked in the next stitches in your beginning chain. So, you'll have six stitches. Then, when you do, chain, turn, uh, chain two and turn. And then, you'll be doing your jagged stitch when you have the right side all facing you. So, you'll grab up the post of the very first double crochet to start your jagged stitch. And you'll get those two jagged stitches in there. And then double crochet in the very and you'll can you gotta repeat uh, those rows three and four until uh, I stopped when I had a total of 49 rows and I, I wanted it to be just slightly shorter than my daughter needed it because uh, I know in the future it will stretch even more so 46 48 and then the 49th row was our first double crochet row that we did here and that 49 just ensures that we're going to be on the correct side because when it gets long enough you'll want to connect it to the other side and when it gets long enough, you just fold it like this, just close it to it, and just try to do your best to center your stitches. Remember, you're working with six stitches, so you want to make sure you have, you know, six stitches, these two, these two, these two, and line those up. And if you want, you can, you can place a marker on either side of these just to ensure that you know these are the six. You should make it... Uh, because of that 49th row where you'll end perfectly where you can crochet, single, uh, single crochet attach, because that's how I like to sew it. Before you start sewing, you'll chain one. It'll give you a lot more leeway here. 
and then you'll go through one, go put your hook through, and then the chain one will allow you to be able to go in through this one as well, so that you can pull the loop through both of them. And then you'll just complete your single crochet. And then you'll go to the next stitch, put it through this, then put it through the strap. Remember, you're doing it with six stitches here. Then you'll pull the loop and then single crochet. That single crochet really makes it strong. It, it ain't coming loose. So again, through the holder and then through the strap, there should be a total of six single crochets. And when you've got it done, chain one. Cut your uh, tail a little longer so that you can actually hide it through. So you won't have a tail, you know, showing up if you cut it too short. Cut it long, use a tapestry needle, hide your stitch really well. I mean, hide your tail really well. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please don't forget to like and share. It helps me so much. Also, uh, I have a newsletter now if you haven't signed up for it yet. I'm always updating my older patterns and uh, to get the, the most out of my channel, I really recommend that you sign up for the newsletter. Also, I'm, I'm very active on Facebook, so you can check out my Facebook business page there or my groups on Facebook. I have two of them. One is more for selling and one is more for like just hang out, family kind of gathering place. So you can check those both out. The links are in the, the description. And also, I have a Patreon page that I've created three tiers now for so you can get in there and help how much ever that you want there's different um, bonuses depending on which tier that you're at so take a look read through it see which one works for you I really would appreciate uh, any help that you can give me and uh, the connection that we can make there is really awesome so that's it guys thank you so much for watching